big news around the NHL this week. Bo Horvat, who at one point was linked to the Nashville Predators, is now a member of the New York Islanders. When you look at the trade return, are you happy the Preds passed on him? Or do you think they missed a good opportunity? Could they have stolen him in that trade? Plus, Western Conference Wednesday, we are taking our one-word concept and applying it to each team in the Central Division. Coming up today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We back, folks. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day. Every single day, we are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast that's available to you wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I am Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer and editor at InsideThePreds.com. Good to see you. Good to see you after this uh, nice little mini all-star break that we have. I know. Like, what skills competition did you participate in while we were off? Uh, Took on the... uh, the other locked on host and the uh, the accurate shooter competition nice i did play broom ball uh that's probably as close as, as close as it counts to uh any sort of all-star weekend for <laughs> locked on <laughs> okay but your broom ball exploits are legendary so i just want everybody listening to know like we have a broom ball aficionado with us yeah, you are of. an all-star yeah, I assist last night in a 2-1 loss. So, you know, I oh. feel like I'm the Uso Parson of Broomball at this point. Look, even Connor McDavid loses sometimes. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> there. It's not there to was, Nashville. If, if there is ever a context to compare myself to Connor McDavid, there is. Right there it there. is. I uh, also want to mention today's episode, before we get into it, is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, now the official sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. So make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And, and we are getting started with our first trade news of the NHL season. I mean, I guess there's been some other little trades, but... Who cares? This is the first, like, big daddy of the That's group. right. The first one, uh, Bo Horvat, traded by the Vancouver Canucks to the New York Islanders for Anthony Bolivier and Atu Rati, who's one of their top prospects, uh, and a conditional first-round pick. Uh, this was a guy who, uh, at one point, we're not sure, like, how close Mm -hmm. but the fact that you know the fact that some Canucks beat writers specifically mentioned Nashville as being in on Horvat makes you think there were some discussions at some point uh yeah this was a guy who was linked to the Nashville Predators in some way shape or form uh there's also a lot of other teams in the NHL that I'm sure would have liked him he's now off the board uh yeah the Islanders and not not kind of the end result I saw for Bo Horvat. No, I have to say, like, this was definitely kind of a, like, tilt my head when I read it and then read the return for it because the Islanders, they're, you know, a couple points behind the Hurricanes, Devils, Rangers, Capitals, and Penguins. So they're a couple points behind. They have played more games than they are, and yet they went out and and – got Bo Horvat and this is somebody who they're going to have to do something with yeah. or not, but it makes no sense. I mean, they are going to have to lot, you know, they're going to have to keep him around. It makes no sense to me unless look, if you're the New York Islanders and you are walking around with this much confidence, then good on you. But I, I don't know. This was not, this was not a team that it made a ton of sense to me. And the return is a whole nother discussion. The return is a whole nother discussion on this yeah. for me. I, I mean, the return, that's a lot for what maybe four months of Bo Horvat 
Uh, and a lot for a guy who you're not 100% sure is even going to be on your team yeah. uh, next summer. I mean, it's possible they could have had some prelim discussions and, and he's, you know, kind of the the good number two or the, you know, Ryan Johansson to mm-hmm. Matt Barzal's Matt Duchesne or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it, it's interesting that it's the Islanders and that they kind of go all in on this. I mean, clearly, when he talked to Lou Lamorello, I mean, they're they're in win now mode for yes, sure. But sure. it's I look at the team, it's like, is this a team that can win now? I yeah, mean, they're, I mean, they're not great, and Ilya Sorokin's kind of the only thing keeping agreed. them together. And uh, it's interesting that they would give up a, you know, Bolivier is, is one thing. I think that's a good return for, um, um, you know, yeah. to, to give up in a trade, like a good player. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, you trade your your top prospect, Atu Rati, um, who's, you know, he's, he's a B-less, kind of a B-tier prospect, but he's the best one the Islanders have. Yeah, uh, and a first round pick in a prospect pool where you don't really have a lot of good prospects. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it feels like this is like two months before the stock market crash. If you're the <laughs> New York Islanders, like you just kind of see this just going yeah. in a direction long term for them. Well, and you put it in context with the Nashville Predators. And first of all, I've got a lot of questions about that anyway. But I think the Predators, regardless of where their record is, they're a little bit in win now mode, too. And it feels almost as like eyebrow raising as the Islanders. But you look at what they gave up, you know, their top prospect. So for the Nashville Predators, you know, would the Nashville Predators have been you know, content to give up somebody? I don't know that we're talking Eskarov, but we're talking, yeah. you I mean, know, if, if you're going like, yeah, if you're going quality, I mean, maybe that's like Yuso Parsonen, uh, maybe it's Ryan Ufko. Yeah. You know, a good prospect, maybe Fedor Svechkov, like a good yeah. prospect, but not like, you know, uh, somebody who's 100% going to be like in your future top six right. or top nine or something like that. Right. And then, you know, to give up a first round pick, a top 12 first round pick in, in this upcoming draft. I don't know. For me, honestly, that feels like a lot for somebody that I'm like, surely the Islanders are going to assign him long term. Bo Horvat. Sure. I mean, you can't just give that up for a four month we're in win now mode when you are where the Islanders are. Right. Right. It's, it's, or do I just not get the game? It is risky. (laughs) Um, Let's, let's talk about the predators aspect of that though. It's, I mean, it felt like, it felt like the Nashville predators were in better position to pull off a trade like that than the Islanders. Yeah. Um, because they have, they do have a deeper prospect pool. Um, Very true. So it would have sucked to lose, you know, probably one of your top six, seven guys. And it would have definitely sucked to lose, um, you know, that, that first overall pick, especially in this year's draft when you're drafting at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the other thing to keep in mind is you probably would have had to send, um, you know, salary cap being what it is and Horvat's salary being what it is, you probably would have had to move something yes. the other way. Um, and I'm not 100% sure what that would be. I know the, there's a lot of talk back in the day that the, um, you know, Canucks were looking for specifically a right shot defenseman. That's somebody like, um, you know, Dante Fabro or Alex Carrier. Mm-hmm. Fabro would have been a happy, basically to make the salary work, he would have been the guy that would have right. to move. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if that was enough. I mean, Bavillier is a good, you know, a good, but not great player, like a good winger. You yeah. Know, maybe God, I don't know. Like maybe Mikhail Granlund. That was back the only the way. thing I you could. Kind of, yeah. You kind of That's... swap a playmaker for a playmaker. I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting, but I mean, it feels like, 
it really does feel like, and that the Preds were in better position than the Islanders to pull that off if they wanted to. Obviously, we, we said they can. They could have made that mm-hmm. trade. Are you glad they didn't? Or do you think maybe missed opportunity here? And again, everything, like everything with the Nashville Predators this season, it's 100% hard to know where I land on this. I would say I'm glad we we stepped we sidestepped this one because I think what you would have to give up and then know that now you're looking at committing to either four months for a big sacrifice or you're looking at writing another hefty longer term contract. Is that where the Nashville Predators want to be? If they had made this trade, do they want to lose the pieces that they would have had to lose, you know, comparative to what the Islanders gave? And then would they be content to sign Bo Horvat to another longer, chunky contract? I don't know that that Nashville is there. I just don't know that they're there. So for me, you know, and especially I'm one of those like dance with the girl you brought, like, let's finish out this, like add a piece here, add a piece there. But I don't know that we want to totally upset the apple cart and and let's ride out what this team is for the, you know, for the most part through the playoffs and then make some decisions. So for me, I think probably it's a good thing that the Predators didn't get in on this, just cost and what it may end up meaning long-term for the Predators. So I'm okay with with missing out on this one. What about you? I mean, yeah, I 100% agree with you okay. on pretty much all the points you made. I mean, I think the Preds are in a point in which if you're going to transition, it's going to be transition some guys, you know, with bigger contracts probably out so you right. can bring up some of these prospects. Um, you know, it kind of this year, I'm sure, is going to be a good barometer, depending on how the Preds finish. Um, not saying that the Predators are going to be out of the trade market completely. Uh, and that's that's a different episode for another day. But, yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, bringing in a guy like Bo Horvat uh, for this year's particular playoff run um, may, may be a bit ill-advised. Although I will say, you know, if you're going to go for it, David Poyle. <laughs> might, might as well just go for it don't put things out there that we're not ready to cover nick yeah um well let's move on to uh, some other teams in the central division we are going to take our one word that we use to describe each game and we are going to take it and we're going to describe each central division team season in one word and we have some help from our other Locked On hosts. We're going to get to that in one second. Uh, First, I want to mention today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. And if you're new to FanDuel, even better they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy you can download FanDuel now so you can bet on a super bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet you'll get up to three thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win that's three thousand dollars in bonus bets FanDuel lets you bet on everything from money line to sports spreads uh, point spreads to who will score a touchdown plenty of prop bets who's gonna say or like how long is the national anthem gonna be uh is the first play gonna be like a pass you know how many passing yards does Patrick Mahomes have pretty much anything like that the FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe secure and super easy to use and best of all you can get paid your winnings instantly so join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57 that is FanDuel.com slash locked on make every moment more with FanDuel the official sportsbook partner of the NFL and now the official betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network all right, and Central Division teams. Uh, a couple of, it's been an interesting year for the Central this <laughs> year. Right now, atop the standings with 66 points in 51 games, the Dallas Stars. And 
What is your one word to describe the Dallas Stars season? Gosh, for me, like, and I went real simple on one word. We're not whipping out any mashed potato recipes in this episode. My one word for the Save Dallas. Those for us. Those are for us. Yeah, we keep those in house. My one word when it comes to the Dallas Stars is surprising. Okay, am I the only one that had no idea who this team was? Like, I remember looking when we predicted the Central Division, we're like, obviously, it's going to pan out this way with Colorado. Dallas was one of those teams where I'm like, I couldn't nail this team to the wall any easier if they were jello. I had no idea. And yet yeah. here we are with Dallas at the top of the Central. And you know, I don't like it, but I have to accept what is. Yeah. What about you? What is your one word for Dallas? Because maybe yeah. I read it. Maybe I read this one wrong, but I had no, no, no. I mean, you and I, I remember those like preseason, uh, those preseason shows we did. And we're like, I just don't see, you know, a lot from Dallas this year. Yeah. My one word is predators because um, this kind of seems like the Nashville predators of <laughs> last year. Doesn't yeah. it? Like, it doesn't does. it seem like doesn't it seem like last year's Preds in a way where it's just like, you know, you look at their roster and kind of like, a you know, eh, you know, whatever, you know, uh, and then it, but that's like you chalk full. It's just packed with players having career seasons yes. like Jason Robertson, uh, you know, 33 goals this year. He's towards the top of the NHL. Uh, you know, Joe Pavelski at, you know, 128 years old, uh, it's still <laughs> scoring points at uh, above his career pace. You have Jay Gottinger in goal, you know, yes. his, you know, a Linus Olmark away from maybe being a threat to win the Vezina trophy this year. You know, so it just seems like last year, like it reminds me so much of last year, where just everything, like every single thing you needed to go right for the Nashville Predators last year. It seems like it's going right this year for the Dallas Stars. Uh, and you know what? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a pretty good team. They're going to have a test, and it may come in the playoffs to the third team in the Central Division right now, the Minnesota Wild. What's your one word to describe the Wild, Anne? Okay, my one word is actually it's a, it's a GIF. Have you ever seen the gif of it's I think it's Bugs Bunny and he is like, what? It's like that gif. I'm still. Sounds good to me. What? You know, that's my one word for the Minnesota Wild because like I see it. I see the numbers. I, I get the record. I understand the roster. But I'm still there is still a part of me that's like, what? with the Minnesota Wild. Of course, you have Kirill Kaprizov. So I get it. Like, automatically, you have, you know, a really good team. Uh, Matt Zuccarello, veteran, is having, like, the best season of his 850-year career. <laughs> uh, you have little, sweet little Matt Boldy, who probably is not old enough to buy a beer, but can now buy himself a fat mansion with a giant contract. They're all performing well. But this, like... And, and I know the Wild are feeling really confident about this and, and feeling really good. But I'm still, for some reason, I still have a hitch in my giddy up about Minnesota. Like, are they going to be able to take it all the way? Are they going to be able to take this all the way? What do you, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I, that's my one word, too, is Jekyll and Hyde. Because yes. it seems like we've seen both sides of the Minnesota Wild this year. You know, they got off to a pretty bad start. And we were all wondering, like, oh, wow, how good was Kevin Fiala for this team? <laughs> uh, and then yeah. they, they were hot. Like, they were one of the hottest teams in the NHL. And now, you know, they're kind of in that stage where they're cooling off a little bit again. You know, only five wins in their last ten. And it just seems like they're, they're just very streaky. Uh, and it's interesting, you know, what's going to happen in goal for the rest of the season, because yeah. Mark Andre Fleury, he's kind of been the starter all year, like the, the known starter and, you know, he's turned things around, but he also hasn't had that good of a year. Like he was a sub 900 goaltender, 900 save percentage goaltender for, for a very long time. While Philip Gustafson in, in 18 games uh, is putting up numbers like similar to Connor Hellebuck. Yeah. Albeit as a backup, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um, 
but but yeah, I mean, it just seems like we are we're unable to kind of see what's going on in Minnesota. Yeah, our uh, good friend Seth, who is the host of Locked On Wild, great podcast. Uh, his one word was gritty, which yeah. I thought was interesting. He said they're inconsistent in terms of scoring. Um, but he says gritty at the current moment. So that is Seth's one word to describe the team. Yeah. Of course, we still have plenty more teams to go before we, A, get to where the Nashville Predators are in the rankings, but also <laughs> cover every team in the Central Division. And we're going to continue and do that in just a second. But first, you know it is Nick and my joy to talk to you about our good friends at Built Bar. We just got through the holidays. And of course, I've got a family wedding coming up. So the goal is to kind of eat a little healthier, tone a little things up, you know, clean some things up. And one of the keys to success for me is going to be our great friends at Built Bar. With Built Bar, you can eat healthy and you can enjoy it the whole time. They are so delicious. You're not even going to think, wow, I'm eating this really healthy protein bar. They are perfect for your New Year's resolutions and your health goals as well. So what makes a Built Bar so good? For starters, it's covered in 100% real chocolate. And everything is better when it is covered in 100% real chocolate. But they also come in great flavors. So they have flavors like churro. They have peanut butter brownie. They have coconut almond. I am a huge fan of the Cherry Barcia or Raspberry. Those are the two I always go for. And I don't know how Built does it, but they make it taste like a candy bar while maintaining just incredible macros. So you can have a Built bar and enjoy only 130 calories. You only get four grams of sugar and you end up with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And here's what's even better about Built Bar right now. You do not have to wait for Built to ship you your Built Bars. We've talked about ordering at Built.com, which you can still do. But now you can just go to Walmart or Sam's Club and pick up your box of Built Bars. So grab, go to Walmart, head to the pharmacy, grab yourself a four-count box. Or if you're close to Sam's Club and bigger is better, go in and get a 13-bar box of your favorite flavor. Uh, mint brownie, if you're wondering what to try, try the mint brownie. You can thank me later. And of course, like we said, you can still get your Built Bars the good old fashioned way through the internet at Built.com. So check out our great friends at Built.com slash NHL Network. All right, Ann, picking things up with the mm. Colorado Avalanche. Yep. My one word, injury. God bless. I mean, they're dropping like flies. They have been dropping like flies in Colorado. And yet Colorado still 57 points, 27, 18, and three. Um, you know, they've had a disaster of in injuries, but they are finding people to come in and, and step up. So, you know, it's not, I think everybody across the league was like, Colorado is going to be back probably in the Stanley Cup finals. I think it's going to be a little different looking season in the end. But when you have Kale McCarr, yeah. Isn't anything possible? He is like the fairy godmother from Cinderella of the NHL. Anything is possible. Yeah. So, you know, we'll we'll see. Yeah, snake bit, I think, would be the word mm. for me uh, for the Colorado Avalanche because it feels like, you know, they've had a lot of changes. We talked about Nazem Kadri going. Uh, yeah. You know, we talked about, you know, a couple other guys like Andre Burakovsky. And certainly I think they've had – you know, they have the star power for sure uh, to kind of play good despite some of those losses. And, you know, kind of like what the Lightning did. Hey, you may have to replace some guys, you know, every year and kind of rebuild the back half of your roster. But as long as that first half is cooking, you're going to win games. Right. Uh, the only thing is that top half has uh, basically been hurt all year. Yeah. Uh, Nathan McKinnon. Big chunk of time miss. Gabriel Landeskog uh, has, you know, not seen the ice this year. And that's mm -hmm. a big thing. Uh, yeah. You know, we mentioned Val Nishkushkin, who started the year as one of the hottest scores in the NHL, then got hurt and hasn't yeah. quite rebounded side. So it just seems like bad luck after bad luck. Um, but but I agree, Ann. I, I think if if they can get people back on the ice healthy, I mean, it's it's still the Colorado Avalanche. I mean, it's and the they're Colorado. still if they go into the playoffs healthy, 
you know, that's I'd still say that's your favorite in the West. Maybe yeah. it's not going to be like a cakewalk like it seemed to be in last year's. Uh, well, we remember. Finals, but <laughs> we remember. Yeah. Maybe it's not yeah. going to be a cakewalk, but I think it's still going to be a, uh, you know, I, I still think it's it's their thing to lose. And they're trending in the right direction at this point. They won seven of their last eight before the All-Star break. So Colorado is trending in the right direction. So definitely a team not to overlook. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, next uh, the the next in the standings is the Nashville Predators. Uh, we, we've heard enough about them. We can do some one words for them uh, oh, later <laughs> on. We, we have done plenty from the Nashville yeah. Predators. Let's jump to the team that's now – Five points behind the Nashville Predators. That feels fun. The St. Louis Blues. Yeah, this my one word for the St. Louis Blues is rocky. I feel like their season has been a little bit drunk. Like you think, okay, here they're getting it together. And then all of a sudden they're not. Um, They won their first three games of the season. And we thought, okay, yep, this is the St. Louis Blues. And then they lost eight in a row. So you, you, they're, they're that Forrest Gump box of chocolates. You just never know quite what you're going to get. Now, they did win five going into the break. They beat Buffalo, Winnipeg, and Colorado. Um, so that's pretty good. Or no, they lost. They lost. They, they lost. lost five straight. They lost five straight. Sorry, they lost yeah. five straight. Yeah, they're, uh, they're they lost. going hard in the other direction. Yeah, they lost five straight. And they lost to Arizona and Chicago, which we're going to get to in a minute. But Nashville cannot throw stones because we are in the glass house that lost to them in overtime one nothing once. So, you know, and then we had the disastrous 5-2 game that Matt Duchesne now refers to as a blessing in disguise. So, yeah. you know, I just, I don't get the blues. I don't get them. Yeah. Uh, my one word is wheels. As in, it feels like the wheels are finally falling off of this blues, you know, how to get around. I mean, this is kind of their, their last, um, you know, the last remnants of that Stanley cup team, you know, even, yeah. even with some guys who have already moved on, but you know, it's, you, you look up and down the line up and Ryan O'Reilly is not anywhere as close to the, to the con Smythe winner. He was that year. Um, you know, he's gone in, in just a few seasons, probably due to injury, uh, a guy who is widely considered to be maybe one of the best defensive forwards in the NHL. Now he's having defensively one of the worst seasons. Uh, you know, Jordan Cairo and Robert Thomas, you know, they're still promising, but they're not quite scoring where they were last year. And it kind of makes you think where their ceiling is. Uh, you know, Braden Shen, you know, still fine, but not what he was. Vladimir Tarasenko, that's yeah. a guy who, you know, is gone from one of the most feared scores to you know somebody who's kind of starting to show his age a little bit yeah. and it just seems like th this window has closed a little bit on the st louis blues and and you hear some of the chatter and it seems like they may be going into selling mode a bit at the deadline trying to trade uh some you know older pieces maybe refresh the core a little bit maybe try to transition to guys like Kyrou and Thomas and see what they have. But I, I would say this is probably the end of that blues team. Yes. Uh, that was always a thorn in the predator's side. Yes. I would agree with you. I think, I think it's, it's winding down for them, trending in the wrong direction. What about the Arizona Coyotes? Let's talk about a fun little team, Arizona. I, I like the Coyotes. Man. I do too. <laughs> it's, it's in my one word for them, and I'll just say it, it it's my one, for, one word for them is trying. Yes. Because yeah. I think, here's the thing about some of these like tanking teams that are trying to be as bad as possible. Uh, like, you know, the Chicago Blackhawks do not deserve Connor Bedard at all. <laughs> uh, the Arizona Coyotes, to me, are a team that is, like, slowly trying to put some stuff together. Yeah. And that may all change when uh, they put Jacob Chikrin on the trade block. But, you know, they're, they've are they kind of built this offense around Clayton Keller, who mm -hmm. is looking like he's going to be a really good uh, – 
you know, player for, for a long time in this league. You know, they have, they've kind of said screw it and put a lot of their younger guys just in the lineup this year, rip the bandaid off. Barrett Hayton is one. Dylan Genther is another. Yusuf Alamaki is another. Um, you know, and we've seen the past couple of years, they have traded, you know, some draft picks because they have a lot of them to get like prospects from other yeah. teams, like guys like Jack McBain. And they've lured him there with like the promise of, look, you're going to play right away. So you can see, you know, as, you know, as opposed to other teams in the NHL that are rebuilding by putting the worst possible lineup out there yes. and saying, oh, well, at least we'll have Bedard. Yep. It feels like Arizona is doing it in the right way by just putting all of their young guys on there and saying, you know what, if this works out, oh, well, we get a, we get a chance at a top draft pick. If it does, then, hey, we just found our young core and we have yes. proven that we can take our young prospects and build them up into something. So I like the Coyotes. Yeah, I do too. They've had a lot uh, going against them. Of course, they have our dear friend, Connor Ingram, who like adore. So there's a part of my heart that will always root for them. But look at the teams that Arizona has beat this season at times. They've lost plenty. I get that. But they beat Vegas. They beat Boston, Philadelphia, the LA Kings, Florida, Washington, Buffalo, the Islanders. They beat Carolina. They, they beat beaten Toronto, Toronto a Come couple on. of times. Come on. So I, I'm with you. I like watching what they're doing. I have mad respect for Arizona because even though their record is not fantastic, they are fun to watch and they are doing it the right way. 100%. Yeah. Speaking of doing it the right way, not. Let's yeah, our last the, one. <laughs> let's talk about the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, shall we? Yeah. Oh, come uh, on. My one word, Anne, is fumigation. <laughs> because it That's just okay. seems like when you walk it, like it just seems like if you would go to Chicago right now, walk up to the United Center, you're just going to see like one of those big like circus tent looking things over the United center with just like poison gas being pumped <laughs> in. Cause it feels like this team just has to, for a multitude of different reasons, uh, you know, that we don't need to go into both on ice and off ice. It just mm -hmm. seems like this team uh, is trying to burn any sort of connection uh, to you know that at that Chicago Blackhawks dynasty, yes. Um, you know they'll they'll keep the banners, but you know they are think they're they are trying to just completely reset uh, everything about this franchise. And yeah, we mentioned Arizona doing it the wrong way or the right way. Yeah, mm -hmm. Chicago easily the the most blatant tank job. Uh, yes. I think we've seen in the entire. NHL in quite some time unless you were thinking Max Domi and Andreas Athanasiu were going to be top line players and if you were what's wrong nope. with you <laughs> yeah I mean yeah. this is a team that you know sucks which is <laughs> their goal uh, you look up and down their lineup and there's not like you know it's not like they're working in young guys I mean Jason yeah. Dickinson and Tyler Johnson are on this roster for God's sakes. I mean, maybe, maybe Taylor Radish is like the one guy, but I mean, you know, the, the thing is if you're rebuilding, you should be putting like, you know, right. Even if your process, even if your prospect rankings suck and you should be trying to, to play your prospects yes. uh, and the Blackhawks are, are not doing that. They're just playing, you know, a lot of basically borderline AHLers, uh, yep. And fourth liners all up and down the lineup to be bad. And, and hey, it's working. And, you know, your, your one, you know, thing to look forward to is maybe you trade like Patrick Kane for, you know, a, a Kings package. And, and now Patrick Kane is having a, a very, very bad year. And it seems like that value is dropping now a yeah. little bit, too. So who knows how that's going to turn out. Yep. There's a part of me, like, that's my one word, tank hard for Bedard. And there's a part of me that's like, I hope you do not even sniff a whiff of Bedard's aftershave at the draft because of yeah. what you've done. Because of what you have done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's going to be one of those things that it's like, 
you know, remember the Gary Bettman quote? He's like, no, nobody in the NHL is tanking. If the Blackhawks wind up go winning Connor Bedard in this draft, I think you're going to have a problem with some NHL teams. I yeah. really, I really do. I think you're going to have to to nip this in the bud. Yep, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, well, let us know your power rankings. Uh, you know, teams that are good, teams that are not. What's your one word for some teams in uh, the Preds division? And give us one word for the Preds as well. We want to hear from you guys. We always do. Uh, and also tomorrow we are doing a mailbag. We oh, are wow. going to be answering some of your questions uh, about the Nashville Predators or the NHL in general. Uh, we've got quite a few so far, but if you would like to chime in, tweet us at LO underscore Predators or leave a comment on our YouTube page. Uh, and we will pick it up and read our best ones tomorrow. And where can people find your work? You can find my work online at InsideThePreds.com. You can find me on Twitter at ANK underscore Mama on Ice. And you can find me at OnTheForeCheck.com. Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. And be sure to follow the podcast as well as LO underscore Predators. And however you're listening to us, whether you're listening on your favorite platform or watching us on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That's going to do it for us on today's Locked on Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We'll be back tomorrow with another all-new episode. We'll see you then.